parables. Parables are stories, narratives in which Jesus teaches us something about the Father, about himself, about the Word, about ourselves, about good, bad, all in between. Today we're looking at the parable of the hidden treasure, which very, very short little parable, Matthew 13, verse 44. It says this man, he went and found a treasure, and then he hid it in a field. You know, he, he buries it. When you find something, about you, you bury it. And then he goes and he sells all that he has to purchase the field. I remember growing up, I heard this parable a lot, and it was always, you are the man, Jesus is the treasure, and you make the decision to give up everything in life so you can have Jesus. So it's kind of like that decision theology type stuff, you know? Make a decision for Christ, you know, give your heart to Jesus tonight type thing. But the problem is that's, that's all wobbly. It's reversed. It's messed up. That's not how it is. Who is the man? The man is never you unless it's the sinful man. But even then, Jesus becomes the sinful man for you. The man in our parable today is Jesus. He is the man. Well, then who's the treasure? You are. You're the treasure. I mean, we're not really something to be treasured. I mean, we're kind of off, kind of weird, wacky, flawed, fragile, as our British friends would say. This is who we are. We're, we're, we're messed up. We're basket cases. Who would ever see us as a treasure? I mean, we're basically, it's like we're, we're the, the coffee cup at Tuesday morning. Ask your grandparents what that store is called, Tuesday morning. We're the coffee cup at the back with spider webs on it at Tuesday morning. No one really wants that cup. Even if you clean it, it's still going to taste funky. No one wants that. You're right. No one in the world does. The idols don't. The devil doesn't. No, none of them really desire you and they don't desire me but jesus does we're not some grand bejeweled crown we are the spider web infested funky looking coffee cup that says you know i'm with smart or i'm with pretty and it has a thumb pointing at you no one wants that coffee cup and yet jesus comes and takes it and makes it his own there's a great book called the hammer of god I encourage all y'all to read it by a guy named Bo Geertz. And um, in it, there's this guy, young man, who's saying, I, I've given my heart to Jesus. And the older pastor says, well, that's not a very good thing to give him. What is your heart but a sin-infested thing? He says, no, 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 my friend. It is not you that give your heart to Jesus. Rather, Jesus is like an old man walking to and fro and comes upon a garbage heap and finds upon it a rusty tin can. He takes his walking stick, puts it in the tin can, takes it home, and makes it the center of his mantle for everyone to see. Jesus has claimed you. No matter how weird or basket casey you are, he's claimed you as his own and sold everything. What does it mean that he sold everything? He gave up, remember, and John, he gave up his suke, his life, his entire being and existence for you on the cross. He gave it up so that he may claim you. He didn't buy just you. He bought the whole field. He came and saved the whole world. This is the treasure. You are his treasure. The world is his treasure. You are his priceless one. He is here for you. He has bought you with his blood. So that's the point of this parable, that Jesus has found you, his beloved, claimed you as his own, and purchased everything around you so that he may keep you safe under the ages of ages. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Higher Things Video Shorts. Remember to like, subscribe for notifications, and donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.